Welcome once again to our Bible studies here at Bible Talk, and I want to welcome you to In Search of Christianity, our weekly program. It's been exciting. Well, I, I pray that it has. I pray that it's been a blessing for everybody that's been participating. And we do want you to participate, and you can do that by going on Facebook at facebook.com, In Search of Christianity, and you can write your comments or questions or suggestions. And take part in this, because yes. if, you, if you ask questions or make comments, I promise you that we will respond in a very timely fashion. Mm -hmm. um, last week, as we were ending, Mark made a good comment mm -hmm. about, by the way, that's Mark. Yes. <laughs> I'm Alice. That's Alice. <laughs> and I'm me. I'm Alan. Um, and we want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. But we've been talking about, this is a serious study for serious people. And we we're closing and talking about using tools. There are a lot of great tools for studying the Word of God. Mm -hmm. so we talked about having a concordance. And as we're going through the study, it's a good idea for you to have, in addition to your Bible, have a paper and pencil or something to write and take notes, jot down scripture verses or whatever comes to your mind. But there's also great Bible software if you have a computer. Uh, there are any number of really, really good Bible programs that will help you to study. And, and you don't have to be a Greek or Hebrew scholar to get some insight into some of the original language. Um, I, I use eSword myself, but as I say, there are a number of them. Uh, on the internet site, in search of Christianity.com, we will be putting up some resources, study resources, in the very near future. So look for that. Well, we'll keep you posted. Yeah, we'll keep, I promise you, we'll keep yes. you posted. But that's, that's just a good idea, because you want to be able to affect it. But the, the only tool that is entirely necessary <coughs> is the Holy Spirit of God, sent to lead us into all truth. That's right. Uh, because at the end of the day, Scripture interprets Scripture, and the Spirit was sent to lead us into all truth. Mm -hmm. That's what you need in order to get insight and get understanding of God's Word. So we're going to pick up uh, where we left off last week. We were talking about, last week we were talking about uh, love, defining love. We had talked about Christianity being defined by the word love. And last week we looked at the, trying to understand the word, the concept of love better. Because we're inundated with so much teaching from the world is totally out of whack. Right. Has so, nothing to do with yeah. that. So we're gonna we're gonna talk more about that right now, mm -hmm. immediately after Mark asks God's blessing on our time together today. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you for your word and we're thankful that mm -hmm. no matter what the world yeah. does to us, we're able to come and study it. Yes. Lord. Lord, just put it in our brains so we can share it with our heart. Amen. Amen. Amen, Thank Amen brother. Thank you, Jesus. All right. So, as I say, we were talking last week, we were talking about love, look, looking at a, getting a better understanding of God's love. We talked about, as I said, we talked about Christianity be de, being defined by love, by the word love, mm -hmm. and talked about uh, the words that define love, all right? So, today what I talk about is the application of love, okay? okay? We have love. Yes. Now, remember, I said this, this Bible study is for the bond servants of God, all right? So, uh, I, the Word of God, Paul wrote in Romans and said that his, God's love has been poured into your heart. So, you have the love. But you have to be able to apply it. You know, you can go out and buy paint. But unless you put it on a wall or something, if it just sits in a can, what, 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 why, why buy it? Why, why bother? Mm -hmm. You can go out and get wax for your car. But if you don't apply it to the car, mm -hmm. what good is it? All right? So the application of love, what do you think that's called? Dear. <laughs> ministry. Ah, of course. The application of love is ministry. Yeah. Okay? The problem is we have such a 
poor understanding in the church today mm. of ministry. And remember, the purpose of this whole study is to find true Christianity. Yes. And there's so much we talked about, you know, in our previous studies, the wheat and the tares. We talked about wolves in sheep's clothing. There's so much imitation. We talk about Satan who comes, you know, as an angel of light. How much more his ministers will come mm -hmm. disguised as ministers of righteousness. So we're looking for the real deal, for, for the real thing here, right? So I want to talk about ministry, because ministry is the application of love. I think, by and large, most Christians today think, when you hear the term ministry, that you're talking about the elite, or the spiritually special, okay? That belief is absolutely a pagan message that came from ancient Babylon and from the Nicolaitans. God, the Jesus said, you know, he hates their deeds, right? One of the things, when you think of ministry in, I believe it's Second Second Timothy, where it, it talks about being a soldier for God. In boot camp, they teach you about the gun. Everybody gets a gun. Everybody has a ministry. So that's not like gunshot. <laughs> so so we we have to learn that the world needs to be shown God's love by everybody. Well, that's my whole point. Okay, when I said you know the idea is that in the church today. We think that ministry is assigned to a special class of people, okay? And they're the ones who go to seminary and get doctorates in divinity and what have you. Um, not, not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but there is something entirely wrong about the concept that ministry is restricted to certain people, okay? Who is called to ministry? All. Christians. Who is? You is. That's right. Okay? Every Christian. Now, if you go back to the beginning in the Old Testament when God delivered the people, his people, mm -hmm. out of bondage in Egypt, right? So this is before Jesus and the Holy Spirit. It's written in Exodus 28.1. Then bring near to yourself Aaron your brother and his sons with him from among the sons of Israel to minister as priest to me. Aaron, Nadad, and Ab Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. So there was, at that time, a class, a priestly class, the Levitical priest, the Levitical priesthood. Okay, that's, that's a very definite truth back in those days, the days of the law, right? But even in the Old Testament, there is a prophetic word that comes from God through the prophet Isaiah. I'm going to read from Isaiah 61, 6. And remember, Isaiah 61, 1 is the first thing that Jesus spoke in his, in his public ministry when he went into a synagogue, right? Mm -hmm. But Isaiah 61, 6 says this, But you, now this is speaking to all the faithful believers in God, followers of God, but you will be called the priests of the Lord. You will be spoken of as ministers of our God. You will eat the wealth of nations and in their riches you will boast, all right? Mm -hmm. So now he's saying to all of God's people prophetically, that you're all going to be called priests and you'll all be spoken of as ministers. Now, the fulfillment of that prophecy is very clear in 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, right? Mm -hmm. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, mm -hmm. a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Now, Paul, Peter, Peter rather, wrote that to all believers who have the same faith as him. Right? That's the Peter kind of faith. The Peter kind of faith. And he says, you are the royal priesthood. So we are, every true Christian has a ministry. This is a foundational truth that is absent from so much of the church today. It's like, you know, we go to watch, you, you go to a church building, which is not the church, by the way. You go to a building that is mistakenly called church, and you watch somebody perform. You watch a you know a pastor get up behind a pulpit and speak. You watch a, a band call itself a, a ministry of worship. Right. You know what? We all have a ministry. This is the Word of God. And we're not basing this on how the church operates. 
We're basing this on the Word of God. Paul tried to explain all of this, and one of the best places in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And in verse 7 of that chapter, he says, But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To each, now he's speaking to the church at large. To each one. And then he goes on in the 11th verse of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. Every Christian has a ministry. Mm -hmm. All ministries are not the same. No. And that doesn't mean that everybody is supposed to get up and stand behind a pulpit and preach, right? The different parts of the body, different ministries. But every Christian, this is one of the concerns that I have. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it's great. I've been involved in the internet since its very inception. I mean, early, early adopted, when, when people, people didn't even know, know what, it was, what an internet was. That's right. And it, it, quite frankly, it excited me greatly because I saw the potential mm -hmm. For this to be used as a tool for the for the spreading of the word of God, all right. But having Facebook on your computer doesn't make you a teacher. <clears throat> having a YouTube doesn't mean that you now have an apostolic ministry to teach. Now God may have called you that, but you better be very prayerful. You better be very prayerful because James wrote inspired by the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And, you know, he, he said, let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, knowing that as such, we will incur a stricter judgment. Yes. And Paul, again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 29, says, all are not teachers, are they? Yes, yes, it's good to share testimonies because, you know, the saints, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. It's good to encourage one another. But having, having the medium doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, if it's you have, not, have a hammer, diploma. that doesn't make you a professional carpenter. It's, Just not, be, a, it's not a diploma. Be, be <laughs> prayerful, because your, your ministry, his call in your life, is based on, his, based on just that, on yes. his call and his equipping you, right? All right? Mm -hmm. Because you have to be equipped for the task that God calls you to. Yes. See, unlike the Pharaoh of Egypt, who called the people of God, the Hebrews, to a task and then refused to give them what they needed to do it, right? Called them to make bricks but wouldn't give them the straw that bricks they needed. Bricks without straw. Bricks without straw. Mm -hmm. God is not. That's, you know, with Pharaoh, he's, he is the epitome of world leader. Whereas God will never call you to do something that he doesn't equip you for, right? right. Each ministry requires the Spirit's gifting in one's life. Okay. Mm. Now the thing is, we we have been we have been convinced that ministry looks like standing behind the pulpit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you no, know, if, if you go to work on Monday doing your plumber, you have a ministry. Right. You still are an ambassador for Christ. You still have a ministry of reconciliation. You still have a ministry of bringing the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus into wherever you go. Right? There is indeed. A five, what we call the fivefold ministry, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Paul makes that clear in his letter to the Ephesians when he says that God gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what ministry you are called to, and as I said, every Christian is called to ministry, God will equip you to serve. Right. Okay? Going to, to, you know, a congregation and gathering on Sunday morning to receive teaching and encouragement and worship together or whatever, you know, that, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But its purpose is, the purpose of that fivefold ministry is to equip you for Monday right. and well, Tuesday and Wednesday world. and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. To the mission. That's not the end all and be all. Right. And how much of how much of Christianity today is wrapped up, you know, with a Sunday service, mm -hmm. bada bing, bada boom, that's it. That's where it ends, yeah. Service, servants, okay? The Greek word that's used consistently through the New Testament is diakoneo. Diakoneo. Sounds almost Indian. Well, how about deacon? Ah, okay. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, that's where the that's where the English word comes from. Is from that Greek word diakoneo, which means to be a servant and attendant, to serve, to wait upon. That's what Strong says about it, right? So think what Jesus said. He said Jesus called them, his disciples called them to himself and said, "You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their great men exercised authority over them." It is not this way among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall become your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. That's Matthew 20, verses 25 through 28. And he goes on in in chapter 23, in verses 10 through 12, he says, Do not be called leaders. For one is your leader, that is Christ. But the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. Love is about serving one another, doing for one another, giving to one another. We talked a lot about that giving last week, right? I want to use the term here because I've said that I believe that this study is targeted to the bond servants of Jesus Christ. Okay? So there are people who are casual, casual cultural Christians. Christians, and that is what's known as an oxymoron. And one of the other schools it's good to have if you study the Bible is a dictionary yes. and go look it up, all right? Because it's a contradiction in terms. Okay? There's no such thing as a casual Christian. Now remember that, that Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said that the natural man, cannot accept the things of the Spirit of God because they're spiritually praised. And we need to be appraising everything spiritually, right? So I want to talk about a bond servant. Yes. Okay. And I, I've had conversations, and I know they upset a lot of people yes. because I get a lot of response to this. The Word of God says, John chapter 8, verse 36 says, So, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. And, you know, it says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I understand that. You see, before we were saved, we were in bondage. We were slaves to sin. Mm-hmm. Okay? We, we were, in fact, serving in servitude to the devil. That's what the Word says. So now I say, okay, we're supposed to be bond servants. And people say, no, I've been set free by God. Don't tell me I'm a servant. Well, you have to have been a slave and been set free in order to be a bondservant. And by definition, listen to where the term comes from originally. In Exodus 21, I'm going to read verses 5 through 6. But if the slave plainly says, now this is a slave who has been granted freedom by his masters. Mm-hmm. If the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife, my children, I will not go out as a free man. Then his master shall bring him to God and then he shall bring him to the door of the doorpost. And his master shall pierce his ear with an awl, and he shall serve him permanently. Okay? That means you've been set free, but you choose to say, No, my desire is to serve you. To call Jesus Lord and Master. Okay? Just, I, I find this interesting, so I want you to think about this just a second. Okay, the bond servant, and God distinguishes that. The book of Revelation, it says in the first verse, is written to the bond servants of Jesus Christ. Right? So if you don't accept what you're saying about the bond servant, don't even read that book. So, you it's know what? to the bond servants. Yeah. Right. You, you better off not even, yeah. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Okay. So the idea is that when you voluntarily, this is what the practice, voluntarily said, you're set free by your master. Mm-hmm. And you say, no, I don't want to leave you. Right. I want to serve you. It's my, this, see, it's not, it's not an obligation anymore. Now it is the heart cry, I want to serve you, Lord. Right? So he would take it to the doorpost. I don't understand where this comes from. And they would literally pierce the ear. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to say something. I want you to think about this. True Christianity requires piercings. Uh-huh. 
Now, this is why in the world, those out there in the world, those who are in the power of the evil one, he's trying to make a mockery of this. Yes. And that's why you see so many people, and, and always been popular in pagan cultures, piercing, yes, yes. being pierced, all right? True Christianity has pierced yes. hands that's right. and pierced ears. Mm. Think about it, right? Jesus Christ was pierced. Was pierced. Mm -hmm. And apparently from Scripture, from Old Testament prophecies, when we see him face to face, he will still have those in wounds his in his scarred hands. Mm -hmm. He'll say to his own people, these are the wounds that I was wounded in the house of my friends. Mm -hmm. Okay? He was wounded and pierced in his hands for our transgressions. We have to be pierced in a year. And this is spiritually. That's why I said you know, we're supposed to appraise all of this spiritually. We have to be pierced in our in our the ears of our hearts, so to speak, to say, Lord, we, we serve you because we desire to serve you. And it's interesting in Revelations, because the book is written to the bond servants. The bond servants. And at the end of each one for the church, he says, He who has an ear, let him hear. Yeah. So there's a lot more to that yeah. than, than I can spend time with here. But but think about that. That Christianity is a religion that required Piercing. piercings, two piercings, right? Not mutilation. N no, no. Which is what the world is. That's what the world, because Satan is attempting, is who he tries to make a counterfeit of everything. Yeah. That's his counterfeit yeah. of this truth, right? I want to make this statement, no ministry can exist unless it is devoted to the Word. Okay, I can talk about being equipped for ministry. You cannot yes. be in ministry, you can't be equipped for ministry without the Word of God. Amen. Okay, the Word of God is what we have, that Word of life. You know, when people were walking away from Jesus because His Word was difficult, Jesus turned to his own disciples and said, what about you? Will you leave too? And they answered and said, where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. It's, it's a roadmap to eternity. Because the focus of all ministry is eternal. Yes. It may have a temporal purpose at the moment, but it has to have an eternal purpose. That's okay. Right. You know, in, in Acts chapter 6, I mentioned this I, a little bit last week, which is a very, very interesting chapter, which... At some point in time, we're going to get more involved in because it's a very transitional period in the early church, right? The apostles basically, when there was a dispute about the, the division of food, right? Yes. And I, as I say, I talked about this last in our last program. Mm -hmm. They said, "Well, let's you know pick from yourselves among from among yourselves seven people to basically to serve the tables. We will devote ourselves to the word." Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds nice. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're serving tables, you still better be devoted to the Word. That's right. If you're a plumber, you better be devoted to the Word. The Word is the breath, God's breath of life. All right? No matter what you do in life, you had better be devoted to the Word. It's entwined, intertwined. If it's not, because it is the breath of life, yes. you will spiritually strangle. You'll die. Mm I'm sure you know this account, but I want to read it to you. And you can look at it from Luke chapter 10. I'm going to read from verses 38 to 42, right? Uh, I'm going to read from here. Now, this is about Jesus and his disciples. It says, Now, as they were traveling along, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister called Mary, who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all of her preparations. And she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Is that word serving? Mm -hmm. then, felt, then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Now, Martha was ministering to Jesus. Yes. She was serving him. Yes. But without, there was that imbalance there. And when, but you see, 
what she was doing to serve, she said it was distracting her. Right. Right? While Mary had chosen the better ministry. Mm -hmm. And that ministry was to listen to him. Right. Okay? Now, think about what we just talked about. See, Martha was using her hands. Yes. Mary was using She's her ear. Pierced. That's right. His hands were pierced. She's She's done pierced. the work. That's right. Her ear, right? Like Remember, the disciples came to Jesus one time, and they said to him, uh, what shall we do so that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. John 6, 28 and 29. Mm -hmm. To believe. That's, That's right. the work. You know why? Because his hands have already done the work. Accomplished. Wow. His pierced hands have done the work. Mm -hmm. Our pierced ear calls us to let the Spirit of God work through us. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you see, that belief that we have to have comes from using our ears, right? Yes, yes. Ministry, applied love, comes from and absolutely requires faith. Without faith, any, anything not done in faith is sin. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. You may do ministry. You may feed the hungry. All right? You may do things like that. It has an earthly manifestation, but it always has to have an eternal goal. It's good to feed the hungry. All right? Jesus said, what you do to the least of my brethren, you've done unto me. That's, that's a good thing. Yes. But the fact of the matter is, if they eat bread today, they're going to need bread tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like I said, Jesus, the thing that was difficult that, that caused people to walk away was he said, I, I am the bread of life. Mm -hmm. That's what people need. No matter what job you're doing, when you do it as a ministry, God will give you opportunity to share the bread of life mm -hmm. that lasts forever, that has it eternal, right? right. And, and it does more than satisfy, it nourishes. Yes. Okay, you know Paul wrote in Second Timothy chapter three, three sixteen. He says all Scripture is God breathed and profitable. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, it was God's breath that He breathed into Adam that brought life to mankind. You can't survive without God's breath, and God's breath is His word. Amen. It is the Spirit, the Spirit, the ruach in in Hebrew, the ruach, ruach, ruach hakodesh, the Holy Spirit. That's breath. That's the same word for wind, for breath, mm -hmm. right? God's word. When you when you're in God's word, that's Him breathing life into you. The dry bones. And that will give you the power that's right. to do the ministry that God has called you to, to take the love that He's poured into you and to touch other people's lives by serving them mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. That is ministry. That is applied love. Hallelujah. Oh, great. So, Father, I just praise you and thank you that you can use us, that you can still use the foolish to shame the wisdom of the wise, that you can use us in our weakness, but your, your strength mm -hmm. will be shown and glorified, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, help us to turn from every distraction, like Martha, to be like Mary and listen to your voice, yes, Jesus. that we might grow in faith, Lord, that we would have that power to truly apply your love. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise well, my God. goodness, these half hours just they zip by. Just zip <laughs> by. Don't forget, you can go to, to you can go to Facebook is the best place to contact us and work with us and be part of this. Yes. Facebook.com slash in search of Christianity. Why not tell other people if this is being a blessing to you, let other people know about it, all right? We want, we want to reach as many people as possible with God's word and with God's love. So until next time, God bless you and goodbye. Far away Stood an old rugged cross The emblem of suffering and shame But I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world 
of lost sinners.